Okay, so now I'm going to give you all a bit of a hands-on to get your hands a bit dirty. Uh, I'm going to be sending to you all a link over here. Uh, so in this link, we'll be uploading a lot of we'll be uploading a lot of our uh the hands on that we do over the next uh the hands on that we do over the next few days. What I want y'all to do is basically go in here. If you all know how to use, if for those of you that know how to use Git, please you know uh do your normal down uh download a repository, clone it, uh whatever you want to do. I trust that you know what to do with it. For those of you that don't know how to use Git, I want you to go to this week one uh basics hands on. I want you to download uh this file over here. I want you to click this file and click uh download. Okay. After y'all have downloaded this, okay, as everyone at this stage, yet, uh, please put a thumbs up if your uh thumbs up or if you are uh, at this stage. Okay, I see. I see a couple of thumbs ups. Okay, I'll give you all a couple more seconds. A lot of thumbs ups. Okay. Okay. I see I see a few. I'm going to move on, on if if anyone that doesn't have it then uh listen. So okay, so after you click download, this should appear in your downloads uh in your downloads folder. And I want you to go to uh I want you to go to where uh I want you to go to where you had your okay, I'm just going to close all of this first. This for tomorrow. Basically, that you're following your lecture for bracket just now. Create a new folder or anything like that. I just called mine basics. I I just called mine basics and I want you to okay. I'm going to uh, delete these two. Okay. Uh create create basics and then just uh drag and drop that file drag and drop that file that you downloaded in. Okay. You will notice that, uh, you will notice that inside the GitHub repository, there is, uh, there is the basic hands-ons and there's the basic hands-on solution. Uh, I've given y'all basically the answers to this. I trust that for this, for the next, next 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes that you will not just be looking at the answers and copying and pasting from them. Uh, you kind of operate on the trust system over here, but it will it will ben you'll benefit a lot more if you don't just copy answers. But just know that the answers are there for you after this session if you want to uh take a look at it. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, guys. Uh, please. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, especially about the mutations yeah. and you know products and unitary operations and anything. Uh. Uh, it seems like the, there, there's a big silence here, which probably means that uh, it could mean either you know everything uh, or you, you guys are not asking questions. Um, yeah. Please feel comfortable asking yeah. anything um, because we, we, all, we all have our own process, own uh, journey of learning. And so please, please feel comfortable asking uh, questions here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this hands-on... Uh, would be a bit, uh, good time for uh, you to ask yeah. questions uh, because uh, we'll go through them um, in the code here. Uh, so you have like notation understanding you wanna, uh, about notation understanding you wanna ask or anything else. Um, like for the first time I learned, you know, quantum computing, um, things like projectors or like how uh, measurement information is extracted, how sampling works, uh, things like these. Uh, are quite unintuitive, so yeah, you know, please, please ask. Okay, so after you, okay, so has everyone have basically entered the stage where you drag, drag the Python notebook here and opened it? Uh, thumbs up if you are at this stage.
You cannot download from GitHub. That's good. Can you download from Let me show them again. Yeah. Uh, okay. So in order to download for it, you need to press this. You need to press on this first. You will see. You will see this, and then you can click. Uh, you can click download over. Uh, you can click download over here. Under this three dots over here, you can also click download the raw file over here, which should give you the same result. Yeah, you can also get clone. Uh this uh this is this is if you know how to use GitHub, uh cloning the Git the Git repository would likely be uh the better way to do it. But yeah, uh not not every is working now. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so these are just some like small basic exercises to get your hands a little dirty to, to try to calculate it. So I'm just going to do the first one, one or two for you. So uh, you already learned just now how to declare a circuit. Uh, this is how you kind of declare the uh, a single qubit over here. And you see that the T over here, this is in some this is calculating the circuit depth. Over here, I'm just declaring a identity state, which basically does uh nothing to it. So this is just a sing uh this is how you can see a single qubit. And so now the exercises that we're going to do is learning a bit about what dynamics we can do with uh for the single qubit. As you, as I think, uh, Rajesh mentioned just now, you can look at the available gates by going by doing the bracket circuits, uh, bracket circuit, uh, command. Alternatively, you can just click on this link that I provided, um, uh, over here, and you can see what what gates are available to you over here. And they give a description of all the gates that you can do over uh that you can use over here with a certain with uh with with certain descriptions on it. Uh if you want to know a bit more about the matrices, I suggest kind of going to uh I suggest going to Wikipedia for the quantum uh just go to the quantum logic gate and they will have many examples of the matrices over here there, there are better there are, there are more comprehensive sites out there but uh wikipedia is a very in it has some very nice graphics that makes things uh very easy to kind of follow okay okay so now for the first exercise so for the first exercise it Thing here. For the first exercise, I ask you all to create a uniform superposition of state between 0 and 1. Does anyone remember how to do that? Feel free to just unmute yourself, say it out, or type in the chat. HK, correct. So what you do is you. Uh, you can check the code for it. So if you go over here, you want to see how to get the Hadamard gate. Um, over here, Hadam Hadamard gates, and then you can see you can apply it to more qubits than you want, and that uh more qubits than one, just one of them. You can apply it to as many of them as you want to. Uh, in this case, because we're only worried about the first, only worry about first qubit, we apply the Hadamard to. The first one. You can see how to apply over here. So sark dot h over here. And so we can do this and we can run it on our local simulator. And then and so and this will be the result of uh and this will be the result of this uh of looking at the state vector. Can anyone tell me what is this zero uh zero point seven oh seven one so on and so forth?
it's a superposition. Okay, it's yes, it's a one over square root two. So now what you have is basically a superposition of uh the zero cat and the one uh of the zero cat and one cat. So this is as I remember. So this is if you look at it in terms of the vector form, this is one over square root two times uh one one zero. And this is one over square root two times zero one. And so this is basically one over square root two times with an equal superposition of uh of the zero cat and the one cat. Okay. Now now the now if I don't want an even superposition instead of I want it to be uh I want it to be one approximately 25% of the time, how do I create something like that? Okay, I'll let you all ex I'll, I'll give you all two minutes to look at it. Uh hint, I want you all to use the rotation gate. Uh over here you can see the rotation gate. You can see there's an X rotation and this Y rotation, this is U rotation. I want you all to figure out which rotation to use, uh, and what angle to put there. In the meantime, I'm going to upload the solution file because I'm going to be lazy. Uh, whenever anyone has an answer, just tell just tell me what what to do. I'll give you until uh on my clock two twenty two. Okay, somebody has come with an answer. Let's try it out. Yep, that's great. Okay, we see that we we don't we don't get one approximately twenty five percent of the time over here, so it's not pi over four, but the idea is there. What what should this be instead? Okay, pi over. Uh, okay. I see someone has put the correct answer, which should be pi over three. Okay. So when you want one to be approximately uh one approximately twenty five percent of the time, that means we can get the exact answer over here. The reason why we can do this uh is if you look at okay, I'm just going to rotation x gate. Um, okay. Over here, you can calculate it using this formula over here, and you you can calculate the theta that you want to put inside, uh, using for the rotation x, uh, rotation x over here. Okay. And 
Okay, so is this the only way that I can get this result over here? Is there any way to achieve the same result? No. Uh, if you just stare at this, if you just stare at this for more longer, what else could I do? Use support, correct? So if I just copy this and use RY, we see that we get exactly the same result. And so the, the, the difference between uh, these two then come in the form of the expectation values, but that's uh, the expectation values that we're going to think about and that, and the alpha and the beta values that we are going to be, that we don't really have to think about uh, today. Okay, I'm going to leave uh, four over here as a uh, optional thing. I, you all can do it in your own time. Uh, I, the idea is that how what how to decide what angle to get in order to get uh any probability that you want using, uh, using this is really not that hard to calculate. Uh, it's really not that hard to calculate. Oh, I gave you all the answer over here. Yeah. Okay. The next thing to do now is the fun part is to use uh multiple qubits. So over here we'll be mainly uh so this is declaring three qubits together, but I'm going to be working with y'all mainly on just uh two qubits over here because that's uh that's that's uh I think that's all we are really going to have time to do. Uh just looking at the time, but yeah. Okay. So how do we okay, so first thing, how do we get the one one state using this to first get the one zero state and then turn it into the one one state using a two qubit gate. What what are the two what are the two uh gate operations that we can do? I'm giving you a clue already to with two gate operations we can perform this. C naught is one of them, correct? Uh what what do we need to do other than C naught? Uh you want to do a H gate first and then a C naught. Okay. Uh let me just uh copy what your copy your suggestions and then let's uh we want to, okay, so over here. Other mod, and then C not. Okay, so we do C not. Okay. So when you do other mod and then you do C not, we don't get the one one state, as you probably can see over here we instead get zero, zero plus one, one. How do I just get the one, one state? Okay, remember, how do I get the one, zero? Okay, I think we are jump jumping ahead. How do we first get? Okay, we... Sharif recommends flipping both from zero. How do we flip both from zero? X gate. Okay, so that's the simple that's the simpler way of doing it. And this is what I want, one of the things I want. So this is actually the question 1B, is which is is this the only way to get it? The way to in order to get this is to get to the one zero state first, is to first flip the first uh the first state and then turn it into the one zero state using a two cubic gate. In this case, we can do the X on the on the first one and then on the second one. And then we get just the one one state. In this case, we can we see that we can get the one one state 
uh, over here as well. The idea behind this is that there are simpler ways to get certain states, especially if they are not you're not looking for a superposition. But knowing knowing how to calculate this, uh, knowing how how to calculate this can be useful at times. And in this case, I don't even need to do two operations here. I can just do a comma over here. And we see that we still get the exact same answer. Okay, now uh, I, I'm just going to put this uh, mini, someone already gave the answer to this just now. How do I create the bell state? We know uh, Rajesh went through it. I walked through it just now too. I think someone gave the answer. What what do I do over here? Okay. Does anyone remember how to create this state? H and C not? Yes. Correct. So it's going to this code. This first H then C. Okay. So now the other interesting so now interesting question. How do we create the other bell state? So this is entangled. And this is maximally entangled. When we measure zero, we know we can get zero on the other one. This is another form of a maximally entangled state. But instead of adding, we instead have the minus. How do we get how do we get such? How how can we uh get this? Same as more. Okay. Yes, correct. Okay, and you see that you can get this state over here. Okay. Okay, and the last thing is that we, the very, I'm going to leave a lot of three for you to figure out on your own. Uh, 3A, uh, 3A, 3B, uh, 3B and 3C for you all to go back and uh, practice on your own. The last thing that I think is an important concept, especially for the ones that are going that want to be go a bit more advanced, is that you need to st start learning how to manipulate things with the unitary matrices. For example, the C not unitary can be uh C the C not unitary can be in the form or is can be seen in this form. And then using the using the code that uh Rajesh went through just now, you can start applying these uh unitary matrices into two qubit gates. And if you have three qubit gates, this would be going to be uh it's going to be uh an eight by eight matrix. So this is going to be it's going to be important if you go a bit more advanced, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop uh I'm going to stop the hands-on exercise over here. Please go. Please try to go through the rest. It's going to be quite informative. Uh, it's going to be quite informative for, uh, for you. So just just to give you all a bit of a hint over here, in the Bell Unitary Two A, you are going to need to form another. You are going to need to form another matrix. Uh, you are going to, need to form another matrix. You all need to. And put another matrix over here and then try to run it. And you should be trying to get this and this. And it's also possible with these two matrices then to create the other two bell states over here.
and I'll leave I'll leave that uh uh as an exercise for you all to uh to after this or do uh do later on. Okay, now to now uh I'm going to go back to the lecture. Okay, there are some important consequence. There are some other important consequences of uh this quantum of uh quantum computing over here, which involves these things that we call the Novo theorems. I put four examples of the Novo theorems over here. I think there's like six or seven of them. Uh, the most important one really is the no cloning theorem, which states that you cannot create a copy of an unknown quantum state. And basically it's because no such function exists. Uh, a corollary of the no cloning theorem uh it means that because we can't clone because we can't copy uh we can't copy a quantum state we can't convey this unknown quantum state to multiple recipients instead what we can only convey to them is how to create this uh is how to create this quantum state but which means that it's not even unknown in the first place so and this becomes and this is a very important difference between uh this and classical uh classical computing because in classical computing you you can just copy uh you can copy as much as you want you can send as much information as you want but an important limiter for quantum computing uh in in this, all this glory with uh superposition parallelism and uh the superposition parallelism and entanglement is that you can't actually create a copy of the unknown quantum state, and this is actually mathematically proved. Uh, this is actually mathematically proven. Uh, I, I'm going to go through uh a quick uh the quick proof for it. Uh, next one, can I? Yeah. Uh, on the whiteboard. Let me stop sharing. Okay, so I'm going to go through the quick proof for the no cloning theorem. The rest of it is it just kind of follows from the no cloning theorem. Uh, uh, you all can read through the proofs of it you want. But the no cloning theorem basically states that uh, there is no such uh, there is no such function u such that when you apply u to uh arbitrary quantum state and an empty quantum state. So the empty quantum state is normally represented by an e. Uh, the empty quantum state is generally what is initialized at. Most of the time, people initialize it as a zero over a, a, a zero over here. So I'm just going to uh, as a zero, but I'm going to just leave it as e because this states for any arbitrary uh empty state. Okay, I'm also in the interest of time. I'm also going to only go through uh, the single qubit ensemble, which states that which means that we can represent this as uh as the linear combination of states of beta zero uh of alpha zero and beta one over here there's no such uh okay so because there's no such you such that this will equals to uh and so this basically means that we are trying to copy uh we are trying to copy this arbitrary qubit over here Okay, how we prove this? So how we prove this is first we assume such a u exists, such a function exists, which basically states that, which basically states that u e equals to this. Which, based on this definition, will give 
us basically if this is the first qubit, this is the second qubit, it will basically give us oh, something that we all know what happened, which is alpha r1, alpha r2, uh, 0, 0, plus alpha 1, beta, beta 2, 0, 1, plus uh, beta 1, alpha, uh, Sorry, alpha two, beta one. Uh, I'm just pardon my terrible handwriting. Plus beta one, beta two, one one, something like that. Okay, yeah. Okay, so this is this is basically what, uh, what it gives. But on the other hand, we also know that you is has to apply uh to a linear combination of things and so what this means is that of uh uh of a zero plus beta of a zero e plus beta one e of a u zero e plus n by by the laws of the and this is just by the laws of the linear combination of the unit operator of applying it to all the of the to the linear combination of things we get this but we remember that u when applied to this function would basically gives us zero zero plus beta one one over here because u is supposed to copy uh u is supposed to copy this for all in the Hilbert space in in the and so because and you can see that this and this are completely different terms this 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 don't have these two terms uh don't have these two terms at all and so this is the intuition behind the no cloning theorem. Okay. So with the no cloning with the no cloning theorem, uh the no broadcast theorem follows. The no deletion theorem also is a corollary of the no cloning theorem as well. And the no communication theorem is a part of uh is a uh, no, no communication theorem is another noble theorem. This is this requires a different proof. Uh, but this also ensures and this also ensures that information can't travel beyond the speed of light, which is what Einstein was uh worried about. So there are so there is a bunch of things that quantum computing are limited by that it cannot do. So we must ask we must ask my, ourselves the question why quantum computing? So quantum computing is basically just basically what we are trying to do. Uh, it's a marriage of two ideas to call, to change the fundamental unit of information from the bit to the qubit. And what this states is that now this representation of information follows the laws of quantum mechanics. Even though there is a way to, uh, even though we have to build the quantum computer using uh in a certain form of hardware is if it's realized in the form of a certain type of physical hardware, what it really represents is an abstract mathematical tool that processes computations differently from classical computers. And by doing so, has its own completely different set of rules. And along with that comes uh advantages and disadvantages. The advantages comes in the form of you can use superposition, you can use entanglement as resources. The disadvantages come in the forms of the several noble theorems that limits it in very uh very important ways that make sure that it's not the same as uh classical computing. Okay. So why quantum computing? The problem with classical computing, as we said just now, is that the Morse law, which has defined this era of quantum computing, of, of 
computing since 1965, is experiencing a gradual decline. If you realize, uh, if you go and Google Moore's laws, death, Moore's laws, still holds up, so on and so forth, you will realize that, okay, Moore's law is not going to just die, it just, it's not just going to suddenly, computers are not going to improve anymore. Computers are improving at a much slower rate as they had before, uh, as, as, they, as they have had at, than before. Many people have already predicted that Moss, uh, many people have already said that Moss loss is dead because the last time there was a time still improvement in tr uh, transistors was I think about three, four years ago or something like that. Uh, I don't remember the exact details. Uh, the, and the rate at which transistor, uh, we are doubling the number of transistors on the microchip is slowing down greatly. Many people, uh, I have seen some people that say that Moss loss is already dead because it's no longer keeping to its constant two year timeline. I've seen some people say that it will really only officially die after we kind of put it and say that, okay, but uh, computers can no longer improve. This is the best we are going to get. Uh, many people kind of see that as uh, like maybe 2040, 2050s, uh, 2040s, 2050s. Some people kind of have put it in a more middle point where it was like, let's wait for, fun for computers to stop improving at uh at a decent pace because it's still improving at a decent pace it's just not uh exponential the idea behind it is that when Moore's laws completely declines the phase of computing has to change polynomial polynomial problems that used to polynomial problems that has a large overhead linear problems that has a large overhead that we can't solve with her that we can't really solve uh that we can't really solve just by having better hardware in the future starts becoming a problem. Even more importantly, there's a lot of interesting problems with exponential pro uh, with exponential uh problems. What things like optimization are uh, MP hard problems. Yeah, they require exponential some many of them require exponential solutions. Many of them require heuristics, so on and so forth. And what this means is that the rate of which we can solve these problems is going to slow down, is going to die at some point of time in the future. And so the idea behind it, the idea behind why quantum computing is important is because we want to introduce a new quantum, a new computing paradigm. It's not to com replace classical computing. It's instead providing an alternative tool that treats information in an extremely different way. And with that, uh, in this, it treats information in an extremely different way. And by doing that, it's enabling, uh, it's enabling the entire computing paradigm to solve problems that, uh, in a faster way that they could not have solved previously. And these only apply to certain classes of problems. The way it enhances the the way it treats information differently is by applying the laws of quantum mechanics to it the axioms of quantum mechanics to it, and by changing then the abstract mathematical structure by which it's based. And that's and that's why and that's why people are so interested in quantum computing nowadays, because they we have stopped seeing the improvement with classical computing. People are wondering where we go from here. This is the new this is a new quantum computing paradigm that we might we can think of.